James Corbett of the Corbett Report has asked viewers to give their own opinions for podcast number 150. I think there should be thought given to continuity of independent news. Uh, there should be some sort of summit outside the U.S. May I suggest Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico is a, a protectorate, so you know it's still part of the U.S. You can go there with your driver's license, as far as I know. But Puerto Rico has been under uh, U.S. occupation for 112 years. It's an example of what's wrong with the U.S. Basically, we're grabbing countries for whatever excuse. Uh, we're colonizing. The people of the U.S. are being bankrupt. They're bankrupted. Their families are being torn apart. And it's all about the U.S. government getting stronger. And it's run by offshore bank banksters and corporations. You know, wake up. If the internet is shut down there needs to be some alternative way of getting news to people who want independent news whether it's distributing CDs, DVDs or just flash drives with various podcasts also there should be thought given to ham radio outside the US uh, inside the US uh, maybe if well that was the old way to get news maybe thought should be given to that to have something in place outside the US to give people inside the US and the world news. Prior to 9-11 in place was a system of police and rig courts to take care of citizens who got mouthy in newspapers on the internet and who were contacting elected officials. You can be put on a list to be arrested on site if you're critical of an elected official or if you just contact your elected official asking for some sort of service. Ken Kryaski, Green Party campaign manager for Connecticut Governor, was critical of uh, Connecticut Governor Rell. He was put on a list, arrest on site. He's more dangerous than Al Qaeda and any of these supposed terrorists and he was arrested on site. I was put on that same list. So just showing up in public and get arrested if you're vocal. Prior to 9-11, police in the Stafford Springs, Connecticut area were bragging that there was some sort of event that were, was coming up where they were going to get special police powers and they could basically do what they wanted. They were running, or well, they probably still are, uh, prostitution, uh, drug running. Basically, criminals are paid tax dollars to commit crimes on the lower level. They are police informants, and there's more and more of them. So, selling drugs uh, brings in profits for police. The informants can keep half the money, half the drugs, and a lot of them are, are on probation, so they're basically slaves of the police and there goes there is your army of thugs so it's about crime and making a profit from it it's not about serving you for your tax dollars uh, I was vocal in newspapers this is um, you know prior to 9-11 I was writing letters to the editor I was also contacting elected officials so I was being followed around by police you know, sometimes there was two cruisers in Connecticut, state police, and wherever I went, Home Depot, uh, if I went to get my car fixed, I was working uh, painting and wallpapering a tractor trailer training school, and I was doing that after hours. So I was followed to there and from there every night that I worked. And there was one or two cruisers in the parking lot watching me through the windows, and they were basically trying to intimidate the crap out of me. Instead of going after real criminals, they're going after people like me. And they were soliciting people that were on probation to make some sort of false accusations against me so I could be arrested. A, a woman was asked to 
make a false sexual claim against me so I could be arrested and then I would have to, you know, I'd be a sex offender. Two felon, druggy pieces of shit, police informants at each of my properties. I had rental properties in Summersville, Connecticut, and Stafford Springs. So were waiting for me on my property to attack me. So I had to run from my vehicle to my house, inside my house um, every night. This is for months. Uh, I was getting threatening phone calls from these people. The police had refused to protect and serve. So uh, I knew if I got attacked on my property that I'd be arrested and go to prison for that. I got attacked on my property 10-11-01. Uh, I'd actually written Bush 9-15-01, um, eh, not even a month uh, prior. The police were aware of that. Uh, the state senator Tony Guglielmo was aware of that. And I'd been proposing laws to get actual protection and service because police had refused to protect and serve. So I got attacked on my property. Uh, only I was arrested and I received a year in jail, three years probation, I had no previous record. A man who raped a three-year-old that was already in trouble with the law didn't get prison. Uh, an armed robber got 10 years probation. Uh, two other people that I knew that were charged with the same misdemeanor uh, offenses caused facial damage and they were on probation. They didn't get prison. So this is what your taxes pay for. I had a strong relationship with my daughter. Uh, I was going to put her through college. I was going to teach her how to drive. And we, we were looking at houses to buy. I had rental properties. I had worked my entire life, 20 years, more than 20 years, setting up a small business and buying property. I fixed them up over five years, well actually four, and the police were after me, not prostitutes, not drug dealers, not vandals. Basically, crime pays for them. And a year in prison, I, haven't, I have no relationship with my daughter. I'm not able to own um, a home. Uh, getting a job, getting any kind of job is hard now. And they're supposed to support people like me. Uh, they're supposed to you know, be for families. They're not. So something needs to be done. Citizens need to be informed of what's really going on. Also, if we're going to have, you know, any hope that our elected officials understand what we want, we want to be represented for our taxation, is there has to be some sort of independent media. That's why I think there should be some sort of Liberty Summit in Puerto Rico, Old Juan, uh, would be good. I'm open for suggestions and I need somebody larger like say um, the Corbett Report, I don't know about Alex Jones, to actually have a you know summit where there's speakers and where people get together and discussion for what can be done is accomplished.